بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم تو ليكتشر 3 فور ديجيتال سيجنال بروسيسنج عنوان هذه المحاضره راح يكون elementary operations on sequences Okay, so the first elementary operation is uh, scaling. Scaling means that you are multiplication by, or you are multiplying by a constant. So, y of n is an output of the scaling process or operation, and it is equal to a x of n, where x of n is the original sequence, a is a constant, y of n is the resultant or the output, uh, the resultant for uh, the scaling operation. If the magnitude of a is greater than one, then we call this amplification. If the magnitude of A is less than one, we call it attenuation. Okay, the sign of A means that if you have a negative sign means that you will have a 100 the minus sign means 180 degrees phase shift between y of n and x of n. Okay. Graphically, we represent the scaling operation by the triangular shape, which is usually used for op amps, operational amplifiers. The input is x of n, and the output y of n is equal to a times x of n. Okay. If we take an example, a very simple example. Let's take x of n to be equal to 6,5,3 and 0. And let's say that if we do not put the arrow underneath one of those elements that we have in x of n, this means that by default the first one is n equals 0. So this one will be for n equals 0. Okay, and the others will be 1, 2, 3. So the instance of time, n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. This is by default. Okay, let's define that, or define w of n equals to 0.5 x of n. So, need find w of n. Okay, so W of n will be 6, the first element multiplied by 0.5, so it will be 3. The next one is 2.5 and 1.5 and 0. So this is our new output. Every <coughs> single element inside X of n will be multiplied by the scaling or the multiplication, the multiplicative constant that we have. Okay, okay, so this is the scaling operation. Let's define the next elementary operation, which is addition. Addition. So we need to add two sequences. Uh, in this situation, the sequences
have to be of the same length so otherwise if not let's say if not pad with zeros so the sequences has to be or have to be of the same length if not if they are not of the same length then we pad with zeros and then do the addition uh, here y of n is equal to x of n plus w of n so and this will be added point by point addition uh, symbolically we have a plus sign we have x of n w of n and the resultant y of n is equal to x of n plus w of n okay let's take a simple example we have x of n equals to 1 minus 2 and 4 and let's assume that the zero here is in the middle so we have an index of minus 1 0 and 1 the x of minus 1 is equal to 1 x of 0 equals minus 2 and x of 1 is equal to 4 and w of n is equal to 6 2 7 5 and 4 and we have a 0 here at the first element so the index 0 is at the element 6 and we need to find find <coughs> y of n which is equal to their addition x of n plus w of n okay so to do that let me shift here and do the addition so we have two sequences with two different lengths the first one has a length of three and the second one has a length of one two three four five so a length five length three the zeros are not in order so we have to fix them up and put them in order so we have one minus two this is my x of n which is equal to one minus two and four and the other one so we have our zero here the other one is the six here we put it underneath so we have six two seven five and four so we will pad here a zero so we'll make it of the same index for w of n so we padded a zero here and we padded three zeros here and now both of them are of length six so one two three four five six they all started from minus one up to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So from minus 1 to 4, we have a length of 6 for both sequences. Then we do the addition. When we do the addition, we find y of n to be equal to 1, 4, 6, 7, 5, and 4. So we add a point by point addition. The index of minus 1 with the index of minus 1, the index of 0 with the index of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now we have here is our 0 for the resultant output. So y of n for the addition is this, this sequence here. Okay? Okay. Uh, the next operation is multiplication. And the same goes for multiplication. It's also point 
buy point multiplication okay so <clears throat> also here the sequences have to be of the same length If not, then we do the same as in addition. We have to pad with zeros. Multiplication is represented by a cross circle with a cross inside. Then we have x of n, w of n, and the output y of n is equal to x of n times w of n. Okay. Let me repeat the previous example that we have here, but we take it for multiplication. So I'm going to make use of this example. I'm going to take this one out, okay, and do the multiplication. The same procedure here applies. X of n, we put it in the same manner. W of n underneath, put the indices, the corresponding indices underneath each other. n equals 0, n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, and so on. Pad with zeros if you have two different lengths of sequences, and then do multiplication. So y of n here will be 1 times 0, it's 0, minus 2 times 6, it is equals to minus 12, and we have the index here, 4 times 2 is 8, 0 times 7, 0, 0, and 0. So this is our resultant multiplication. Y of n, x of n times w of n is equal to this sequence. Actually, if you look at this sequence, we have a zero here, you have a zero padded here, padded zeros. You can also say that this is equals to minus 12 and 8, and this is your output. You can take this out. You don't put an arrow underneath because you know that this is the index for index n equals zero, and this is one, so this is index equals zero, and this is one. All others are zeros, and you can exclude them, okay? So this is our y, y of n for multiplication. Okay, so the, the fourth operation that we will talk about is time shifting. So the fourth operation is time shift. Time shift. And in time shift, we find y of n to be equals to x of n minus n0. If n0 is greater than 0, so the sequence here is shifted to the right. So the sequence, if n zero, if this n zero is greater than zero, then the shifted, the sequence is shifted to the right by n zero samples. And we call this a delay. So we delay the sequence by n0 samples. Graphically, we represent this by using a box that we have z inverse inside. And we will come to this later when we do the z transform. We'll talk about this. But anyway, if you have x of n 
coming to a system with or to a box with z to the minus one, then you are delaying this x by one time or one time delay, one time period delay. Y of n is equal to x of n minus one. Okay, if n zero is less than zero, then sequence is shifted to the right, to the left, sorry. So it goes down to the left by, by N0 samples. And we call it time advance. So this is time delay. You can say it is time. Time delay, and this one is time advance. And we represent this graphically by z to the power one, not minus one, x of n applied to a box with z input, z inside, and this one will be y of n equals to x of n plus one. Okay. So if I need to do more than x of n minus n zero, if I have a box of z inverse cascaded with another z inverse, so we have two of them, x of n input, so the output will be x of n minus two. We can put this in one box together and say, okay, I'm gonna have it like this, z to the minus two, and you have here x of n, x of n minus two. So you can put one delay at a time, or you can put the two delays together. Okay. <laughs> Let's take an example, x, x of n equals to the one that we have before with three elements. Let me take x of n, which is one minus two and four. And we have here, this is my x of n. We need to find, find x of n minus three, let's say. So x of n minus three is my output. So y of n equals x of n minus three. So if you put here, you start putting an index y of zero, it's equal to x of n minus three. So if you put like this, y of zero, let's for instance, so this is x of minus three. And here we have the index n equals zero, n equals, for this one is minus one, and here you have n equals one. So x of minus three definitely is equal to zero. Y of one, so this is equals to x of minus one minus three, it's minus two, and this is also equal zero. Y of zero, sorry, Y of two, I'm sorry, it's equal to X of two minus three, and this is equals to X of minus one, and this one equals one. So the first non-zero value that we have is at Y equals two. So we have a delay, so the one, y of three is equal to x of three minus three, and this is equals to x of zero, and this is equals to minus two. And y of four 
equals to x of 4 minus 3. This is equals to x of 1, and this is equals to 4. y of 5 and above will be x of 5 minus 3. And this is equals to x of 2, and this is equals to 0. And all other values are all zeros. Previous to here, all the values here are all zeros. So my output will be y of 2, y of 3, and y, y of 2, y of 3, and y of 4 are non-zero values. So y of n will be equal to 0, 0. So y of 0, 0, 1, 2, minus 2, and 4. And you have the zero here, actually. This is, this is the one for our index n equals zero. For y at zero, it's zero. For y at one, zero. For y at two, three, and four. And you can see that we take the samples to the right by n samples, by three samples, we take it to the right. So for n zero, here it's equal to three. So our n0 here is equal to 3. So we take the, the sequence is shifted to the right by n0 sample. So the sample here was n0 equals the, the element of minus 2 has the n0 element. Now it is shifted by, and it was the second element here. So you have 1, 2, and 3. So we shift it by three, 3 samples to the right. Okay, so this is our, our value or our resultant. Y of n is equal to, to this output. Okay, the same sequence shifted to the right by n0 samples. Okay. <laughs> okay, the fifth operation that we are going to take is the time reversal. Reverse in time. Sorry. I'm sorry about this. This is minus two and four. Let's keep this one. Fifth operation is time reversal. Time reversal means that you have y of n equals to x of minus n. So you have a flip 180 degrees phase shift. You flip the sequence. And let me just demonstrate this with a graph. If you have a sequence like this, This is my x of n, starting from minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and etc. And here we have zeros. So this is my sequence. If we need to find, find y of n, which is equal to x of minus n, this means that we will flip it around the y-axis. We'll take the y-axis our, uh, as our rotation, rotational axis, and we flip it 180 degrees. So the sequence y of n will look like this. So we'll have the y-axis. So this is our y of n, which is equal to x of minus n. Every negative index will be positive. So this one will start, we will start from 2, and here, are all zeros and this is instead of minus one you have an index of minus minus so you have an index of one and then at zero it's the same and the positive indices there will be all negative indices and the output will be like this so this is zero so sorry two one zero 
minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So this is what we call a time reversal or flipping of a sequence. You flip the sequence and you always flip it around the y-axis. So the y-axis is my rotational axis. You flip it 180 degrees with a minus sign, which, which we will get this sequence here. So the, positive, the negative index will be positive index. The positive index will be negative, negative index. Okay, the last operation, actually it's not a 100% operation. It is something called branching or pick off point. The branching or a pick off point where you can branch x of n to more than one, you use them as inputs to more than one system. So this is branching or pick off point. Okay, this means that if you have x of n, you can take x of n to so many branches and you will have here x of n, x of n, x of n, and you apply it as, as many, to as many systems as you want. So you can do branching without any problem. You don't have the problem in, as in electronics, which we call the, uh, uh, let me just uh, remember that it's the, uh, uh, okay, just forget about it. This is what we call branching at the time being. Okay, and you have, you provide, or it provides multiple, copies of the sequence. Okay. All right. So those are the six different um, elementary operations that we, we can do on sequences. Let's just see by the end of this lecture if we need to do some multiple elementary operations together. How can we do that? So we'll take as an example multiple of elementary operations. Okay, let me take the following example. You have y of n equals to 2x of n plus 3x of n minus 1 plus 4 of x of n minus 2 plus y of n minus 1. Notice that this, this is a multiple, multiple of elementary operations. Here you have y of n as multiple inputs all are ad added together. This one, x of n is multiplied by a scaling factor of two. This one has a scaling factor with also a shifted operation. And this one is also the previous output. So you have y of n as a function of the inputs, previous inputs and previous outputs, okay? So this operation can be represented graphically as follows. Okay, let's have a summation here first. Y of n will be at the output here. Okay. X of n will be first multiplied by two, and then you have here X of n. So you have X of n multiplied by two, added to another X, but shifted. So we will shift by z inverse and at the output here we will take the output multiply it by three we'll take also the output of the first or the or the shifted input and we shift it once again so you have another z inverse and now you multiply it by four 
and then we will add those to the adder. So you have x of n multiplied by 2. You have here x of n minus 1 multiplied by 3. And you have here x of n minus 1 coming to the input here. So you'll have x of n minus 2 multiplied by 4. And we have to add y of n minus 1. So we'll take the output y, belay it by 1, and take the output, multiply it by 1, so you don't have to multiply it by anything, and you add it here. So this is a graphical representation of this difference equation. This is what we call a difference This is a difference equation. And it's usually what we have actually instead in the continuous time, we have a differential equation. In the discrete time domain, we have something called difference equation. And this difference equation can be solved and you can find y as a solution in terms of x of n, okay? So this is the end of our uh, uh, lecture today. Thank you very much, and I hope you will enjoy the lecture. Thank you.